Good evening. Today we're talking about the electrolytic cell. So this is um, in connection with uh, the lessons 2.43 and I think 2.44. Okay, so electrolytic cells are involving a non-spontaneous reaction. So the reducing agent is going to be above the oxidizing agent on our uh, table of half reactions. Okay, so of course we have to take a look at our table of reduction half reactions to find out, you know, the information we need. Um, now, it's a non-spontaneous reaction and it's caused, since it's not going to happen by itself, it has to be forced, but it's going to be caused by the passage of electric current through the solution. So the redox process is the same as the voltaic cells. Uh, the net redox reaction can still be split into two half reactions. The oxidation occurs at the anode, reduction at the cathode. Now, so red cat still works here, right? Reduction still occurs at the cathode. But there is a difference. The anode is positive and the cathode is regular or is negative. So we used, uh, you know, cat paws to describe uh, the voltaic cell, but you can't use that part for the electrolytic cell because in this case the cathode is going to be negative. Okay, the electron will still flow from the anode to the cathode, uh, but now they're forced to flow. Okay, now why would you do this? Why would you waste electrical energy in order to force some electrical, you know, some some electrolytic cell to function? Well, one of the reasons would be electroplating. Now this is the process of depositing a metal at the cathode of an electrolytic cell. The object is coated with metal for various reasons. It could be to protect them from corrosion, so like pipes and underground tanks, or it could be decorative. Uh, cheap metals plated with thin layers of more expensive metals, so like plating silver, spoons, uh, chrome bumper plating, things like that. So with the non-spontaneous reaction, um, you know, in this case here, you've got the carbon anode and the copper spoon, uh, which is your cathode, and we have silver nitrate as our solution. Okay, so the silver from the silver nitrate solution is going to be used uh, to, you know, coat the spoon, to be plated onto the spoon. Okay, and what's being eaten up uh, is the copper anode in this case, right? Um, now, this reaction wouldn't happen normally unless you put in uh, plus 0.43 volts of external current. And you can calculate using the method we discussed last time, um, you know, what the cell potential would be. And if it's a negative 0.43, then we know we have to add 0.43 to make it go. So the mechanics of electroplating. So let's have a look here. And we've got a, an external energy source, the battery shown here. So the electrons build up on the object connected to the negative terminal of the power source. Okay, and these electrons uh, are going to, you know, basically be, be attracting the positive silver ions. Um, and when they contact the negative electrode, the ions are reduced to form silver atoms. Okay, so it is the object to be plated that has this negative charge, and then the positively charged ions float around, touch it, and then they turn into you know, the solid metal. Now the electrons from the silver metal are attracted to the positive electrode. Um, so you're basically oxidizing the, the silver metal and releasing these silver ions in this scenario anyway into the solution. The loss of electrons oxidizes those silver metals and then those ions in solution will be attracted to that uh, negatively charged, in this case, uh, cathode <clears throat> and plate. 
Okay, now another reason you might use an electrolytic cell is for electrolysis. So electrolysis is the decomposition of a substance by means of an electric current. So it can be used to produce um, iodine gas or hydrogen gas and uh, aqueous hydroxide ions from the electrolysis of uh, potassium iodide. Do, do, do. Okay, so um, you're going to hook up your electrodes and place them in the tube with uh, your potassium iodide. Okay, with an anode and a cathode, pass the current and you're going to get separation of, of your compound into the elements. Another reason you would use uh, or run current into a cell is to recharge them. So you can have cells like voltaic cells that normally would produce energy and but run current through them and recharge them. So the rechargeable voltaic cell functions as an electrolytic cell when it's charging. So when you recharge one of these cells, you use an electric current to force the oxidation and reduction of the contents of the cell to reproduce the original reactants. Okay, and those, that is our discussion of the electrolytic cell. And, uh, you know,